Hey, friend, old Steve here. And Larson. Yeah, welcome back to Going in Rock Count Out. Take it from here. You're supposed to be doing this. I intro. had a great idea. You know how in the intro graphic you have Count Out going across the logo? Yes. We should do the same thing up here. Do like get, get a another? piece, get a cutout that says Count Out. Oh, to slap it on there? Yeah. All right, we can do that. That'd be cool. I'm down for that. I think this sign only costs like 20 bucks. We can just get another one made. No, I like the idea of having some sort of thing. Slap that I, it on Yeah, there. just slap it on there. Take okay. it right back off. All right. Like, all Anyways, right. you're watching Going In Raw Count, the only top 10 show here, uh, youtube.com forward slash Steven Larson. Mm -hmm. And also, the show is available anywhere fine podcasts are found, including CastBox. Got a great partnership with CastBox. It's a great app. Yes. Check it out. Yes. Um, also available on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Steven Larson. Mm -hmm. If you know what Patreon is, you know the deal. Mm -hmm. You con contribute a certain amount, you get rewards in exchange for your contribution. Yes. Give me a tier. Fifteen dollars. Not no, it doesn't exist. Twenty dollars. Yeah. What do you get for that? Friendo care package. You have that graphic available. Mm -mm. No? All right, watch some other shows. You can see that graphic. Mm -hmm. Comic book, poster, some stickers, postcard. Yeah, it's all right there. Uh also Pro Wrestling Tees, Pro Wrestling Tees dot com slash going in raw. We have t shirts there. Yeah. My van shirt. No. You can buy my used van shirt. I have an Okada shirt that is available in Pro Wrestling Tees. However, not at our shop. Not at the, our shop. What exactly. were we talking about today, Steve? Well, Larson yesterday saw the greatest Royal Rumble in the history, man. And boy, did it live up to its name. I can't believe how great of an event it was. And, and what a man. shocking conclusion when one. <laughs> We're feeling this on Wednesday. When that person won the Rumble, wow. It, the, the, the largest Royal Rumble hasn't happened yet, but it got us to thinking. I'm assuming it's going to be amazing. That's why I said all that stuff. It's probably, it might be a crap fest. I don't know. Could be. Could be. Anyways, that got us thinking, of course. Who have been the best Royal Rumble winners? Not just the best. Winners? The greatest. The greatest. Royal and, Rumble winners. of course, going up in conjunction with this video, is another video for the worst. The not greatest. The not great. And who knows? Whoever won yesterday could have made this list or the other list. We haven't seen it yet. We no. don't know. We don't know what's going on. But also, the part of the aspect of this list, like any list we do, there's three criteria. Being good, legacy, kayfabe. Yeah. Uh, we'll learn two of those three at greatest Royal Rumble at the conclusion of it, but one we won't, and that's legacy. Legacy. We don't know what's going to happen after the the largest Royal Rumble win, apart from them getting a pretty cool-looking trophy. If I'll put it this way. The only way somebody could have made this list yesterday mm -hmm. is if they entered it one or two and lasted all 40 men and, and one. 50, 50. I'm sorry, 50 men and one. If somebody did that, my bad. We did not put them on this list. Yeah. They, I think that would they, that would. Yeah, we might do a list. quick pickup if that happens. If a Saudi prince comes in at number one and lasts all all fifty men and never takes a bump, <laughs> just stands there and people fall off him because he's like the one with the twenty million dollar check. He probably should have made this list. <laughs> so can we put Saudi number ten? Saudi prince. No, here we go. Uh, let's kick it off with number ten. Ten. Shinsuke Nakamura. That's right. Of course, that right now. That just happened this year. That just happened this year. He's in a fantastic feud with AJ Styles. He's transitioned into a heel role. He went on to win at WrestleMania. Here's the main. No, he didn't win at WrestleMania. He I'm lost sorry. He went in to fight uh, AJ Styles at Mania. Yeah, man. Uh, here's the main reason AJ. I'm sorry. Shinsuke Nakamura is at, here on the list because we have had years. After year after year lately of just bull crap. I think if I'm not oh, mistaken, prior to Nakamura, like the last five winners of the Rumble are on the other list we're doing. I think they are. Let's see here. It has not been a good run of late. Um, Nakamura is why you look over that. I'll give you some stats. Nakamura had a pretty solid performance at this year's Rumble. He lasted 44 minutes and 38 seconds. I think the second longest in the entire match behind Finn Balor. Right. Um, he eliminated Sami Zayn, but perhaps most uh, impressively, the final two people he eliminated were John Cena mm -hmm. for more than a decade, top star in the entire company. And it was a wonderful, wonderfully booked finish. Yes. And then finally, to win the whole thing, Roman Reigns, who a lot of people assumed would be winning the match, set up his match against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, including myself. Um, part of the reason he's on here is based on the star power uh, he eliminated to win the whole thing. So, dude, no, absolutely. So, and even like our number 11, basically, would have made 
from 2011 until uh, until Til this year, until this year, or until 2017, they were all on that that little the the worst winners list. Yeah. So that's another reason because we'd all thought, okay, Roman's gonna win this thing. That's yeah. how it's gonna go down. And then they gave us. Because it wasn't just Shinsuke winning. It was, well, us internet nerds, us New Japan nerds, we want to see AJ versus Nakamura part two. Of course, they they fought at Wrestle Kingdom a couple of years ago. We want to see that at Mania for the WWE title. Yeah. And the fact that they gave that to us uh, was pretty special. We marked out. Everybody, oh, yeah. can, the consensus was, wow, what a great pick that was. Shinsuke Nakamura, number 10 on our list. Yes. Number nine. Nine. Batista in 2005. Of course, this rumble is remembered um, by everybody as the rumble where Vince tore both his quads when he entered to the ring. Yes. And it looks like as if uh, he got in the ring, tried to stand up, and his legs lost all structural integrity. It looks like they were made of some sort of gelatinous material, and he just fell right in his butt. Well, rewind a moment. The ring... Uh, the, the last two men in the ring in the Royal Rumble that year, 2005, was Batista and John Cena, yes. probably the two most over dudes in the company. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, they eliminated each other. Um, two sets of refs, one, from, one set from SmackDown, one set from Raw, go over and they each start claiming their guy won the Rumble. Yeah. They would raise Batista's hand, the crowd would go crazy because people love Batista. And then they'd raise Cena's hand and, and they went crazy because they loved Cena back then. And so they both got in the ring and they're like, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Out comes Vince McMahon. It was a big strut. And then he like runs into the ring. You can see him hit his knees on the apron on the way in. And it was either that or sliding around to get positioned to stand up. Or standing up. Whatever. Or standing when up. he stood up, he just fell right back down. He just down. fell back down. So he was sitting there. He, trying to fight off the obvious discomfort. <laughs> Dictating what was the to happen searing, next. burning pain, pain in his of thighs, his quads tearing or having torn. <laughs> exactly, and he starts dictating what's going on, and eventually they restart the end of the match. They restart the end of the match, and uh, Batista fairly quickly eliminates John Cena after both of them had their finishes reversed. Cena tosses, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Batista tosses Cena out. Crowd goes crazy, and of course that led to the fantastic. There you go. The dissolve of evolution. Yep. Triple H trying to manipulate Batista into heading over to SmackDown. SmackDown. Yeah, challenge so SmackDown. the WWE title. Instead, he decided to stay on Raw, challenge for the World Heavyweight Championship. Which Triple H was carrying. Took on Triple H at Mania 21. That's right. Won that match, held the belt for 282 days. Mm -hmm. Yep, and he was, Batista was wildly popular. Oh, right yeah. Then. So, yeah. Batista, 2005. Number eight. Eight. Triple H, 2002. So uh, he apparently this is his first return to action from being out from injury for a while. Mm -hmm, he was yeah. out for like six months or whatever. Yeah, he was out for a long, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, he entered this Rumble, 2002, at number 22. Mm -hmm. um, lasted more than 23 minutes. And uh, finally eliminated Kurt Angle to pick up the win. He would go on to main event WrestleMania 18 against Chris Jericho, where he won the Undisputed Championship. And while I don't think this is generally acknowledged as the official kickoff of the Reign of Terror, um, I think that's more or less officially when he was given by Bischoff the World Heavyweight Championship after the, the uh, they Brand decided they would have yeah. you know two belts, one for each show. Um, this might have been the precursor to it. Mm -hmm. And I think for the next three years, you know, it was a rarity when he wasn't holding that world heavyweight yeah, title. Lol, Triple H wins. And in fact, Golden it, Shuffle. It did feel kind of like when Triple H lost to Batista at 2005, in 2005, that that might have been his idea of a torch passing, you know, Batista mm -hmm. evolution. He was bringing him up. Um, so, uh, yeah, but I mean, I remember when Triple H did return from injury, um, he was supremely over. Yep. Like, I mean, people, it was one of the first times sort of in the modern era where you can look and say, you know what? I hate you as a heel, but goddamn, we understand that you do fantastic work. Welcome back. And the fact that he had finished that match that he got injured in. Yeah. And so this was, you know, it made sense for him to come back in this manner. Yeah. And then take on. Uh, um, we have to give a shout out to two other competitors who won the Rumble after being uh, out with injury. Mm -hmm. uh, first, John Cena, 2008. He mm -hmm. came back from a torn pectoral, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Like he came back yeah. like half the time they said he would. Yeah. 
and came in at number 30, I believe, and won the Rumble. Mm -hmm. And then two years later, Edge returned from injury. Did kind of the same thing. Came back earlier than expected, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he entered at 29 and won the Rumble. Well done, everybody. Yes. All right, moving on. Number seven. Seven. Hulk Hogan, brother, in 1991. First person to win back-to-back -back Rumbles. That's right, yeah. First person to win back-to-back -back Rumbles. And, of course, it did lead uh, to uh, him... So he was the world, I think, was he the world champion at this point? No, he wasn't. No, uh, I think Slaughter beat Savage for the title at that show. Did this lead? Okay. Slaughter, be, okay. So Slaughter went into WrestleMania 7 as world champ. I mean, it was heel Sergeant Slaughter. Okay. Um, Hogan challenged him, won. Okay, yeah. This is the year that the that WrestleMania was in L.A. It's supposed to take place at L.A. Coliseum. Ticket sales are so bad, they moved it to the sports arena. But this was before, this was before... Was this before the R Rumble win meant title shot? Well, I mean, he got a title shot after winning <laughs> yeah, the Rumble. He, so was Hulk, it together. he was Hulk Hogan, And though, the I... following year, the it was when, we'll get to this a little bit more, when Flair won it for the title. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly what year it was when the winner got a title I shot. He was like, I want to say it was like 93. But anyways, yeah, Hulk Hogan, you know, it's Hulk Hogan's probably crap. They were booking him like crazy. But he was the first person to win back-to-back -back Rumbles. Mm -hmm. It was Hulk Hogan. So. He entered at number 24 and eliminated seven people. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. Someone else would do the same exact thing later on. This what? Interesting parallels. What? Anyways, moving on. Number six. Six. China. Hold on a second, you say. China never won the Royal Rumble. No, but well, she did I'll win. Au contraire, mon frere. The frere. corporate Rumble took place January 11th, 1999, episode of Raw. Um, there was like some beef between the corporation and beef. DX. So they had a Rumble. Yeah. Ten people competed. It was wildly, it was wildly like entertaining. Oh, yeah. Um, especially the finish which saw uh, Vince McMahon standing tall after thinking he had won the match, thinking he had won the match and eliminated DX. And nobody thought, ah, ah, there's still, there's still China. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. She's a woman. She's freaking stronger and better than all the dudes in there. And then sure enough, uh, DX's music hits crowd goes insane at, at that moment you could see, and I don't know if this is, nobody's ever said, yeah, this is true. China before she died, uh, claimed that she was in line or at some point considered for a world title shot. She actually was a number one contender yeah. at some point. I don't know if it had anything to do with this, but she was a number one contender at some point. I never put the world title on her, but when you saw this happen, made perfect sense. you could totally see it. Perfect you could sense. totally see it. That's yep. why China should be in the Hall of Fame. Oh, yes. Um, so I would, I would uh, behoove everybody out there uh, to check out uh, the corporate rumble edition of WWF Monday night raw. Yeah. Because it is a lot of fun and it you can see fantastic. this crowd pop for something that really did seem truly original. She comes to the ringside, uh, Briscoe, uh, the, uh, you know, and Patterson, Pat Patterson, yeah. Try to stop her. She just throws them aside, gets in there, dumps McMahon over the ring and he nearly decapitates himself. That's when like his neck hit yeah, the rope yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah. Ooh, ouch. Anyways. Yeah. No China. Spectacular. Great Absolutely stuff. spectacular. Number five. Five. Steve Austin in 1998. You, you dumb son of a bitch. Look at me. I got my finger up. I'm heading to WrestleMania. What? Yeah. Sorry. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier Hogan came in. At number 24. Okay. And seven people. Austin did the same thing seven years later. Yes. Um, last eliminating The Rock. And, of course, he won on the challenge. Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels for the WWF title at WrestleMania 14. Won that match, claimed the title, launched the Austin era mm -hmm. in WWF, the most profitable time for the entire company. Ratings shot through the roof yep. during the Monday Night, Monday Night Wars. Um, and uh, this was the start of an incredible long feud between uh, Stone Cold and Mr. McMahon that eventually would more or less end at WrestleMania 17 when Stone Cold turned heel. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, everything you just said is true. Uh -huh. <laughs> it, was, it was sort of the beginning of the Austin title era. Yeah. So awesome stuff. Stone Cold Steve Austin is also on another list that's going up today. Yeah, but although we'll his performance later. in that particular Rumble was good. Fantastic. Yeah, just the circumstances around the end of the match. We'll get to that. Yeah, that's a different show. Tranquilo. Don't wait for that show. Moving check on. Out that show. But don't finish this show first, then go to that or show. Or watch them in conjunction with like same time. Same like time. Two different tabs or two different browsers. Hit play at the same time. It'll be a cacophony, 
and visual corticopia <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> overload. If you were to do that. Senses overload. Number Play dark side of the moon the same time, too. Oh, they're backwards, yeah. yeah. Number four. Number four. Rick Flair. This was the year 1992? Yes. Yeah, this is the year after Hogan. Um, the uh, WWF title was up for grabs in this match. First time that ever happened. Mm -hmm. um, Rick Flair entered number three, lasted over an hour um, to win the match. Last eliminating Sid with some help from Hogan because mm -hmm. they were set up a Hogan Sid thing going into WrestleMania eight. Um, yeah, they really wanted Sid to be a main eventer. I mean, I could see why. He's tall, and on top of that, backstage he's probably really like you know he's probably got a lot of personality. You know, it's like, hey Sid, how you doing? Good. I was playing some softball the other day, and oh, tell me about softball. You know, pff, main eventer. Yeah, you're I guess in. so. You're in. You know, good conversation about softball. I'm put the world title on you. I'm going to have you break Bruno's record. I'm going to have you kick out of a leg drop. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, anyways, yes, as I said, the first man to win the WWF title, he'd held up, he'd hold on to that belt until WrestleMania when Macho Man would beat him for it. Mm -hmm. And what probably should have been the main event of the show, um, but wasn't. I think yeah. it went on third or fourth to last, if I remember correctly. Um, he got the belt back one more time before dropping it to Bret Hart before he was heading back to WCW. Yeah. But I don't know if you've seen this rumble. Is one of the most wildly entertaining rumbles there's ever been. It's fantastic. If, it, if, if I've seen it, it's been a little while. I'll have to go back and watch it's it It's a again. lot of fun. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Let's got Ric Flair in it. Why don't they just go with Hogan Flair? I know. For Mania it's so weird they year. didn't do that. I'm trying to see. I think uh, 93 ooh, featured the WWF debut of Lex Luger. I think that was the. I think it was the first year they officially said you get a championship opportunity. All right, I think that's interesting. Then the match was around for nearly, I think, about five years before that stipulation was added. I think I remember reading that, but hey, Steve could be wrong. I don't know. I'm All right, figure it out now. Number three, three, Chris Benoit. Yeah, I don't like really saying his name either, but we kind of have to. Because yeah, you, you have to recognize that his performance in the 2004 Royal Rumble was really impressive. Entered first. Yeah. Won the whole thing, lasting yes. over an hour. Yeah. Um, eight eliminations in total. Sorry, six eliminations in total. Mm -hmm. um, and then he eventually went on to defeat Triple H and HBK. In the the main click. Event. He went on to defeat the Reign of Terror and his best friend. Mm-hmm. I mean, talk about putting the guy over. Yeah. Man, Amanda wow. WrestleMania 20. Fantastic match. Oh, fantastic match. And the reason why Larson's talking with kind of a down, sort of a somber tone right now is because it's hard to get excited over Chris Benoit. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, yeah, but you have to appreciate, you know, he was booked so strong back then, and the guy at that point really deserved it because he did seem like one of the hardest workers, mm -hmm. and he really seemed to earn it. He really seemed to take that stuff very seriously mm -hmm. like that was one thing that i took away from the uh, talk is jericho with um uh nancy benoit's sister mm -hmm. was that you know he really carried the weight of the world in terms of his career uh pretty heavy on his shoulders and uh she said you know that in part led to you know the what tragic circumstances happened, yeah. behind his yeah so uh yeah chris benoit number three and number two two Shawn Michaels in 1995. I remember watching this live. I think I'm great. Um, uh, he entered first, British Bulldog second, but it's basically two people entering, entering at number one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he eliminated the most people that year. Eight. Lasted 38 minutes, 41 seconds. Become the first person to win the Royal Rumble from the number one position. Mm -hmm. Last eliminating the Bulldog. They were the first two to start. Last two to end the match. Yeah. Some cool storytelling. It's really, this is another really fun rumble. Yeah. Um, but he was not successful in his title shot. He went on to lose to Diesel in the main event. Actually, no, it wasn't the main event. main event was uh, LT versus Bam Bam Bigelow. That's right. Oh, sorry. This is WrestleMania 11, not 10. Sorry. WrestleMania 11, not 10. WrestleMania 10, the main event of that was Yokozuna and Bret Hart. Yeah. Sorry. I got this wrong here. WrestleMania 11, lost to Diesel. Mm -hmm. Um and, yeah, yeah, that's uh, right. It yeah. was until the next year. He won the Rumble again the next year, 96, earned a title shot, took on Bret Hart, finally won the belt. Childhood dream came true. Mm -hmm. He was WWF champion. All-time great. So, yeah, according to Wikipedia, 93 is when the stipulation actually says gets a shot. Gotcha. But Hogan did do it two years before that. He, it was just because he was Hogan, though, not because yeah. they were fighting for that in the Rumble. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. But, right. Yeah, no, Shawn Michaels' all-time performance, I mean – it's him, Ric Flair, and Okada. 
but Okada is up here because he's God tier. Mm -hmm. And the other two are mortal tier, but they're still top of the mortals. Yeah. In-ring performers, all-around pro wrestlers. Legacy kayfabe being good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's criteria for everything we do. Pretty much, yeah. Well, it's being good, legacy, legacy kayfabe in that order. In that order. So the most important criteria being good. is being good. Right, exactly. That's the most important thing. You have to be good. Anyways, Larson. The best... Royal Rumble winner uh -huh. of all time. All time. Number one. One. Rey Mysterio, 619. So he entered number two spot, lasted 62 minutes, longest of anybody ever to date to win the Royal Rumble. Um, he eliminated six people. Um, the final two he eliminated was Triple H mm -hmm. and Randall Orton. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and he went on to defeat Kurt Angle and Randall Orton to mm -hmm. win the World Heavyweight Championship. At WrestleMania 2, still the record. Incredible performance. He was in the Final Four this year, too. Yeah. And he's going to be, well... No, it's been confirmed he's going to be a greatest Royal Rumble. Or he was a greatest Royal Rumble. <coughs> yeah, no, that's what I was saying. Yeah, I said he was going to be... All right, and I stopped myself because I was going to say he was at, yeah. in the past tense, yesterday's greatest Royal Rumble. He might have won it. Might have won it. We don't know. You might. I mean, he, this, this might just bolster... We might have to say Mysterio... 2006 slash 2018. Well, see, that's a great thing because all I need, all I have is here is Ray Mysterio. There's no year, yeah. So he could be the greatest Rumble winner of all time oh. because he came in at number 50, lasted all the way through number one, yes. one, yes, and then or no, number one lasted through 50, yeah, one, and he won this one. So either way, we're covered with uh -huh. Ray Mysterio. Correct. Anyways, uh, so yeah, uh, those are the Rumble winners that we felt were best. Let us know in the comments, of course what Rumble winners you think are best. And remember, we also have another list up right now. Right now. The top 10 worst, worst, worst Rumble worst. winners ever. And it's basically the last, it's from 2011. It's like the last, it's like seven of the last eight years yeah, is, our, is that list. Yeah. yeah so anyway, but you'll find out what order it's in and who else is on that list. Till next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.